I became a wrestling fan when I was a kid towards the end of Gordon Sully being on TV. So I don't remember a ton about him, but I've always had fond memories of him. Can Jim please share any stories about Gordon Sully? Also, my grandmother got me into wrestling and I remember going to her place on Saturdays to watch NWA wrestling. And she used to get so mad at Jim and Ric Flair and yell at the (laughs) TV that you were both a quote, no good son of a bitch. The worst thing I ever said to her one time was I thought Ric Flair was a good wrestler and she gave me a look that made my short life flash in front of my very eyes. <laughs> so Gordon Soli, Jim, any memories? Uh, yeah, well, the first time that I ever got a chance to do Atlanta TV was in the summer of 83 when when uh, we went down there to do the, the Georgia Wrestling Superstars territory, right, with Dundee and me and the Angel and the Bounty Hunter and the original Fantastics, and we've talked about and tweeted out links of that stuff and all that shit. But it, it, it Dundee had been telling Ole, he said, you, you told me you'd get some of my guys on, you know, on the big TV there, Ole, on TBS. So, you know, they look like stars to, to go to these towns of yours. So he agrees one week he put uh, Bobby and Terry Taylor on. And that, that's when Bobby Fulton told, <laughs> told him in the Omni also they wouldn't do a job for the Road Warriors. <laughs> what? He, he, well, it, let me tell this, and then I'll go back to the story that he asked. But yeah, it, it, Bobby Fulton and Terry Taylor were the fantastic ones. And in the George, local Georgia towns, we were supposed to be running Macon and Columbus and Augusta, Georgia and Marietta and Knoxville and Chattanooga, that little local territory with our little local studio show, us rejects from Tennessee that Ole had brought down and deal with Jarrett. They're on the big northern tours, all his Georgia wrestling superstars in the Omni and on TBS. Well, we're supposed to get uh, at least on TBS and a couple of our guys supposed to get booked on the Omni. So it looks like there's some connection, right? So they book Bobby Fulton and Terry Taylor to work with the Road Warriors or booked at the Omni. And when they get there, they find out they're going to be working with the Road Warriors. And Bobby told them that they couldn't. He'd been in the business on a mainstream basis for like a year and a half at that point with Jerry Jarrett. And suddenly he's telling them, I can't do a job for the Road Warriors in the Omni. But it Dundee had told him, no, don't let him beat you. He had no idea what was going to So they worked it out and everything. But I always thought that was great that Bobby Fulton actually got to tell the Road Warriors and Ole Anderson that he wasn't going to do a fucking job for him. Smallest fucking guy in the room. Uh, anyway, I got a chance to do the TBS show. They had uh, the Angel, Frank Morrell, and Jerry Novak, the Bounty Hunter, my top heel team that was going to be working this big lucrative program with the Fantastic Ones. Uh, a spot on the TBS show on on Saturday night, one night to beat up. And God, it's on my rookie year DVD available at jimcornett.com. I, the match is, I can't remember the young fellas' names. And Dundee had told me, just do like Jimmy Hart did in Memphis. Go over to the desk and start you know, cutting a promo and, and get our shit over, right? And just steal as much time as you can because they didn't have me down for an interview. So... I I had been watching Gordon Soley and and Georgia Championship Wrestling for all those years, and already I'm on TBS right today, and we're going to go over, and now I've got to go over and steal a fucking interview from Gordon Soley that he doesn't know is coming, because uh, it, it, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission, right? So... As soon as the match starts and Gordon is starting, he, obviously he's not prepped for this match. He's not going to put these guys over like they're the second coming of goddamn, you know, Slater and Orton. Uh, this is this is a popcorn match for the TBS program that Saturday night because who are we, right? Nobody's ever seen this before. And I go over there and and get into it with him and just steal the fucking promo most of the time that my guys are, are you know, beating up these fellows that they've given us and he didn't know it was coming but he didn't let it throw him off and he let me do my thing and at the end of it as soon as i walked off he's like well i must say meeting mr Cornette, i'm very underwhelmed (laughs) (laughs) totally dry gordon solely thing and then boom because i was afraid he might pull the microphone and tell me get the fuck out of here you goddamn goof you're not supposed to be over here this is big time tv but he was very cool with it. So I always appreciated that. And then he zinged me at the end. What was it like working with Freddie Miller? Um, actually, I only got to meet Freddie Miller a couple of times because, as you know, he by the time that uh, Crockett got the TBS slot, he was gone. But in at 
just those few short weeks we were down there around the Georgia office and doing promos. I got interviewed with him a couple or got to be interviewed by him a couple of times. And he was just like, you see on TV, he was all bouncy and had that enthusiasm in his voice and he was loud and, and he'd do the stuff and then off he'd go. Freddie Miller, see you be there. Do <laughs> you remember when they brought Gordon back in 89? You know what, uh, who, who was his champion? Who yes. brought him back in? Who's the um, was it? Well, it, <laughs> A combination of, I mean, the Barnett was there for God's sake. It was a combination of everybody. It was there. They should have brought Gordon Soley back with wrestling being a high profile thing on TBS. The guy that, that built it considered the Dean of announcers. I think they probably would have been better served to let Gordon do more special features and big shows and things and such, instead of trying to put him on regular shows. Cause by that time he was, his stamina energy level for the whole thing was not what it once was. Um, but I got to do the Saturday night TBS show with Gordon Soley. Also, I, that's another thing I've wrestled at WrestleMania. I've, I've, uh, I've had Ric Flair put figure four on me and, and dusty Rhodes hit me with the bionic elbow. And also I have been Gordon Soley's color man for a TBS Saturday night, uh, world championship wrestling program. That 89 announce crew is like a dream team in many ways. It's Jim Ross at his peak, Lance Russell, Gordon Soley. I mean, it's truly great. Bob Cottle. Bob Cottle. Bob still- Cottle. Yeah, you were really good. Missy did a little bit. Um, Paulie did a little bit. I mean, it was really just great announcers uh, and Missy. I mean, and no no offense, but she wasn't. Oh, no, no we, we, we love Missy. Yes. And, um, you know, I guess the last great Gordon Soley moment would have been that Clash of the Champions, Troy, New York, where he yeah. did him and Jim Ross did Flair versus Funk. I quit, and Gordon being there actually really kind of made it even more special. Yeah, so you know, so that was a no brainer to to bring him back. I I just you know, like I said, I think they 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 worked him too much. He became just another announcer rather than if they'd have limited, even if he just came in for a couple main events on the on the pay per view or the Clash or whatever, didn't do the whole show. Because Jr. obviously was more capable of handling everything, and they did have so many other good announcers at the time. I think his appearance would have had more gravitas if they'd made it more special. 